Welcome back to another video on A-level chemistry. Here we're looking at the property of electronegativity. What you'll be expected to do is explain the term or define the term electronegativity and then give an explanation for its reasons. So first of all, here is our definition. The ability of an atom to attract electrons in a covalent bond. You can see different variations of this, but this is the one that I have just gone for. Now, um, what we should do is start off by having a look at the periodic table. And the reason for this is because we want to look at what actually happens, first of all, in terms of electronegativity. So um, if we start here with francium, with francium, this is the element with the lowest level of electronegativity in the periodic table. As we work our way across the periods and up the group, electronegativity will increase going across the period and it will um, also increase going up the groups. So my little arrow here just to show you what happens. Electronegativity increases in that direction from francium up to fluorine, with fluorine being the most electronegative element in, um, in the periodic table. So, what you will be expected to do is um, use these different values of electronegative, uh, different uh, levels of electronegativity to explain polarity in, for different bonds. Now, fortunately, Pauling came up with a, uh, a scale for electronegativity and he's already worked out the values for you. He basically started with fluorine and then worked his way back from there and calculated the values. Now you're not going to be expected to calculate these values yourself, but you can see here we've got, um, we've got nitrogen, oxygen and fluorine, the three most electro electronegative elements in the periodic table. And then we come down here to chlorine, which is um, the same level of electronegativity as nitrogen here, 3.0, 3.8. So you're just going to, to use these values. You don't need to calculate them or anything like that. You just need to be aware of the Pauling scale. So let's have a look and see the properties of electronegativity and how this actually affects um, the uh, polarity of different bonds. So I'm just going to get rid of that bit. So first thing to look at is uh, the atomic number. So, the atomic number, number of protons in the nucleus. If we look back at our periodic table, we can see here, as we go across the periodic table, we've got lithium here with three protons, then beryllium with four, boron with five, carbon with six, and so on. As you work your way across the period, the number of protons, the atomic number, increases. So, atomic number increases across the period, Now, because the atomic number is increasing across the period, that means the nuclear charge is increasing. The nuclear charge is the thing that's dragging in, it's pulling in the electrons. So as you move across the period, the atomic number increases, so the pull from the nucleus increases. So that is why going across the period the, uh, the electronegativity increases going across the period because you have more protons in the nucleus, so you have a greater pull from the nucleus. The next thing to look at is the amount of shielding that atoms have. So the first thing we looked at is the, uh, the atomic number. The, th uh, the second thing we're going to look at is the amount of shielding. So... If we look back again at our periodic table, again here, as long as we stay in the same period, there are no extra shells being added on. So remember period one, there is one shell for the atom. Period two, there's two electron shells. Period three, there's three electron shells. Now shielding will affect electronegativity. The more shielding you have, the, more, uh, the less the electronegativity of that element. So as you go down a period, the electronegativity tends to decrease going down the period because you get more shells, you get more electrons covering the protons in the nucleus, and ultimately you get more shielding of that nucleus. So you get less of a pull from the nucleus. So shielding down the group increases. Now because the shielding increases going down the group, this reduces... 
pull from the nucleus. So going down the group, down the group, electronegativity decreases. Out of room, electronegativity decreases down the group. Okay, so repeat that again. As you go down a group, you get more shielding, you get more covering of the nucleus, so the, the nuclear charge is being covered up more, and therefore you get a lower pull from that nucleus. If you stay within the same period, so as you work along from lithium to beryllium to boron to carbon, you don't have any extra shielding. So going across the, uh, across the period, the electronegativity will increase going across the period because you get no extra shielding within that same period. So two things we've looked at so far. Number one, atomic number. Number two is the shielding. So shielding increases going down a group, so it covers up the atomic charge in the nucleus, so less of a pull from that nucleus because there's more shielding. The final thing to look at here is the atomic radius. Now this links in with both of these, both of the first two reasons. As you go across a period, the atomic radius tends to decrease. So if we start off with lithium, we've got two shells, one electron in the outer shell. If you move along to beryllium, you've still got two shells. This time you have two electrons in the outer shell. So you have no extra shielding because you've got the same number of shells, but lithium has three protons in the nucleus and beryllium has four protons in the nucleus. The nuclear charge of beryllium is greater than the nuclear charge of lithium. So the beryllium atom, I've not shown that here very well, the beryllium atom is actually smaller than the lithium atom. Or the atomic radius is smaller because the nuclear charge is greater. So the electrons are being pulled in more by the nucleus due to the greater positive charge. So as you go across the period, the atomic radius gets smaller. Now that has the effect of bringing the electrons that you're trying to attract in the covalent bond, it brings them closer to the nucleus. So in the smaller atoms, as you work your way across the period, in the smaller atoms, the outer electrons that are involved in bonding, they are closer to the nucleus, so there's a greater attraction to the nucleus. So let's write that down. So the atomic radius decreases across the period as the nuclear charge increases. So as the nuclear charge increases, the atomic radius gets um, smaller. So the atoms get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller as you work your way across the period. So the outer electrons, the bonding electrons, are closer to the nuclear charge. and therefore more attracted to that nucleus. So our three properties, number one, atomic number, number two, shielding, and number three, atomic radius. So you're going to be expected to define electronegativity and then explain these three reasons behind the strength in electronegativity. Just to recap, looking back at our periodic table, Electronegativity tends to increase going across a period and it will also increase going up the group. So francium has the lowest electronegativity, fluorine has the highest electronegativity. So the three reasons again, going across a period, the atomic number increases, so the nuclear charge at the centre pulling those electrons in increases. In the same period, there is no extra shielding 
there's the same number of shells. So one shell for the first period, two shells for the second period, because there are no extra shells, there's no extra shielding, so there's, there's no extra shielding of that nuclear charge. That results in the atomic radius decreasing as you move across the period, and therefore the bonding electrons are more attracted, they are closer to the nucleus. You could be asked to explain that, why electronegativity tends to decrease going down a group. You might be asked why it increases going across the group. So we look at why it decreases going down the group. Whilst the number of uh, protons will increase, the atomic number does increase going down the group, the amount of shielding increases, as does the atomic radius, and that basically counteracts the increasing nuclear charge. So going down the group, the electronegativity will tend to decrease. So that video has just looked at electronegativ uh, electronegativity. The next video, I'm going to focus in and have a look at the polarity and how electronegativity leads to polarity in different molecules. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and please share this with all your friends. Um, thank you very much.